So this is a big challenge, and I don't certainly don't have uh, all the answers, but I am optimistic. I think that there are lots of ways that we can confront this challenge, and I also think that they will be good for history as a discipline in the long run. I think one thing that has happened is that um, if you look at how departments have transformed over the past 30 or 40 years, there's been a big move towards world history, obviously, um, but that has had the consequence of making us much more myopic in terms of time frame. So if you look at a given department, 40 years ago, a big department of 40 people at a big US university, you know, you would have had basically nobody working on Chinese history, nobody working on the Middle East history, or maybe one person. Uh, you would have had people doing classical history, people, a lot of people doing medieval history, a lot of people doing Renaissance history, a lot of people, somebody doing Reformation history, somebody doing French Revolution. You would have 30 people doing history of Europe from contemporary all the way back to the ancient world. So there was very deep coverage chronologically, but geographically there was very shallow coverage. Now it's exactly the opposite situation. You have very broad geographical coverage, but extremely shallow chronological coverage. And there were a lot of good reasons for that. That was in some sense reflecting the historical experience of students. They were living in a globalizing world. They were very interested in how that globalizing world came to be. Um, but the problem is that now there are other things that students are worried about. One of the big ones is the environment. And the environment is something that changes really slowly. And in order to make sense of that from a historical perspective, you need big, big frames of time. And uh, we're not good at that anymore. We're not used to thinking in big frames of time. Our departments are structured in a way that makes us think about very recent past or very small slices of time. And uh, one of the ways to really engage students is to open things up. I teach a class in world environmental history that's seven million years and 15 weeks. I've got great enrollments. And one of the things that students always say is that they, they really love the scope. And I also noticed that one of the things that prepares them for this kind of a class is video games. You know, so many students spend so much time playing video games and so many video games are historically themed. And some of them are extremely sophisticated. You know, a game like Civilization is actually an extremely sophisticated modeling of history that allows you to play with all kinds of counterfactuals and to sort of replay scenarios, changing the variables, and um, it allows you to ask very sophisticated questions. And it deals with big time, big space, all kinds of really sophisticated issues involving the importance of culture and the importance of technology and the importance of the long-term consequences of very small decisions. And uh, we should embrace that. You know, that's the perfect opportunity, that's a perfect window to engage students. But I have to say, there was a proposal in my department last year to have a course on video games in history. Rejected. So... And the reason for the rejection? Not serious enough? Not serious enough. Video games are too violent. Um, I don't know. A bunch of things that probably were being said by people who had never played a video game, honestly. But, but yeah, th there's a resistance to embracing things that are real opportunities to, to reinvigorate our discipline. And those are just two examples. There are many others.